Hello, I'm Dr. Shala Daniels Mays. As part of Disability Inclusion Week at the University of Sydney, we have three special guests for you. Sarah Stewart, a three time Paralympian, will be interviewing two of the gliders, which are the Australian women's wheelchair basketball team who are currently in hotel quarantine after competing with the Australian Paralympic team in Tokyo. Georgia Munro Cook is a University of Sydney PhD candidate and Hannah Dodd has been a member of the Sydney University Flames wheelchair basketball team since 2013. Hello Hannah and Georgia, thanks for joining us today. Um, welcome back from Tokyo. Uh, it's so good to see you both, and I hope quarantine's going okay. It's yeah, as good as quarantine right. can be. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're all really interested in how Tokyo was, uh, what it was like um, getting in there, and and any differences. I I guess particularly Hannah, for you, anything you noticed different from the London Games to that? If you want to start off. I mean, obviously, Tokyo was like anything anyone had ever experienced before. Um, I don't think there'll ever quite be a Games like it. And I think the fact that they managed to get both an Olympics and a Paralympic Games to go ahead in a global pandemic is a testament to, to the Japanese because it was definitely very hectic. Um, we had to do two, two tests prior to, um, two COVID tests prior to leaving, so two weeks sorry, three, two weeks out, 96 hours out and 72 hours out. We had to present those when we landed in Japan. We had to do another test while we, when we landed in Japan and wait for those results before we could leave the airport. Um, we had a lot of restrictions on us as the, par as the Australian Paralympic team. Um, so we didn't eat in the dining halls. We didn't use the gym. We weren't really allowed in any of the shops or any of the like leisure activities and things like that because they were trying to limit our contact with other teams as much as possible. Yeah, for sure. And and Georgia, how did you find it as a first games experience? Um, it was kind of strange because you could kind of see the things that were missing compared to a regular Paralympic game in terms of yeah the crowds and um yeah they'd do all the announcements for the game and go out assuming like for cheering crowds but there's no one there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's still a Paralympic Games and it's still pretty exciting and it's still cool having all the other teams there and the different sports, which isn't something you normally do in wheelchair basketball. It's normally just wheelchair basketball teams at the World Championships or something. Yes. Uh, so it was still really exciting. Yeah. And did you find you got a bit of access to um, the other Australian sports within, like when you were in the accommodation and things like that? Did, that, did you get much uh, contact with them, get to know about their sports? Yeah, so because we weren't allowed to access the dining hall, they organised kind of like a mini dining hall sort of thing just for the Australian team. Um, and it meant that we were quite often eating together. And especially when it was sunny, we would sit outside and there'd be other teams there and you could have a bit of a chat. So that was really good getting to know other people. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really good. Uh, you've already both mentioned a little bit that like it was so different not having spectators there and those big stadiums. Uh, how did it feel not having your family and friends there as well? Because I would have thought... If up until the COVID moment, there would have been that thoughts in your head that family and friends could have joined you there to cheer you on. I mean, it was disappointing, obviously. Like, my parents had been looking forward to coming and my family and friends. And they all sent me a really nice video um, in support leading up to the Games, which was lovely. Yeah. Uh, but we've known that they haven't been able to come for, what, six months, 12 months even. Yeah. So I think just the fact that it even could go ahead was really all we could ask for. Um, yeah, I think for me, it was kind of the first major tournament that my parents haven't been at. Um, so obviously they were in London and they were at Worlds a few years ago. Um, so it was definitely a different feeling. Um, and I think also just like having friends and family there, it's a chance to decompress um, away from the yeah. environment of what the Games is. And <laughs> as you can attest to, it's a very intense two weeks and it's a very, um, it's a very stressful two weeks as well. It is like an amazing time and it's a lot of fun it is also just a lot of pressure and a lot of um tension um so being able to like go out and have lunch or coffee or something with your family or your friends was always a really big thing just to have a little bit of time away um and a little bit of normality so that was definitely like an extra added level of of um intensity that we probably weren't really ready for but it was yeah it was definitely weird for us 
in lockdown at home, it was so fantastic to have good coverage of the games. And, and I think that that's been building over the years. And this was more than any other games really got that kind of coverage at home. So did you find you had people getting in contact with you, school kids writing to you or your community groups and that kind of thing? I think, yeah, like obviously a highlight of the Paralympic experience is the pen pal program. Um, I loved it the first time around and it was just as good this time around having just random people from all over Australia send you messages is, is really cool and really fun. Um, I think, as you said, like one of the positives of COVID was the fact that the coverage was so broad um, yeah. and the fact that <laughs> as bad as it is, people were kind of forced to stay home and watch us um, and engage with us a little bit more. Um, but I think the fact that Channel 7 did cover us so broadly was amazing. How did you guys feel about the announcement of equal prize money for Paralympian and Olympian medalists? I think obviously it's a massive relief for us as Paralympic athletes. Like more often than not, we're doing this part-time um, and we do have to work full-time jobs or part-time jobs to sustain being an athlete. Um, so I think the fact that we are getting rewarded the same as Olympic athletes is obviously a massive step forward in equity and equality. Um, I think the fact that as horrible as it is, the government had to be pressured into it is a bit is a bit crappy, but at the same time, I'm really glad that the Australian population did get behind it so strongly and so quickly that it happened within a week. <laughs> I was probably a bit surprised, to be honest, when I first heard the news that it wasn't already equal and that we didn't get the payment. Um, <laughs> I hope that kind of encourages further more investment in Paralympic sport at the grassroots and building it up so that it's not just the people that win a medal that get that money, even though that's really great, but that we continue to invest in Paralympic sport. Has preparing or going to the Paralympics changed your future goals and what's next for each of you in sport and life? I think going to the Paralympics has inspired me to keep going. I mean, I was always kind of planning to keep going, but now I'm like, have more hunger, I guess. And I think as far as future goals, I mean, I'm just about to finish uni. So that's a kind of got to, it's everything to be up in the air at the moment. So I've yeah. kind of got to decide what I want to do now. Yeah. But at least I have basketball to keep working on. Um, <laughs> I'm in a slightly similar situation to Georgia um, in the fact that I finished my studies just before Tokyo um, at the original, the original Tokyo. Um, I finished um, at the beginning of 2020 um, and kind of, looked at our schedule and went that's that's not going to work with getting a, a full-time job and um especially a new graduate position um you are a little bit of the workhorse and I was like I I can't commit to that and I don't want to make a company commit to me and then be like oh by the way not here for five months of the year um <laughs> so I um I put it off and I ended up actually just working on some of my own projects um with the help of my uni at USC um as well as a couple of uh labs in Brisbane and Paralympics Australia themselves, um, which was really cool. And I developed my um, knee case, um, which I use at the Paralympics, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, obviously with a shortened cycle, um, having only three years instead of four, um, everything comes up pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so obviously like we don't really get a whole lot of time off. We have camps starting back up in November, December. Qualifiers are in March, I think. And then, yeah, you've got Com Games and Worlds next year to, to look forward to. So those are definitely on the radar at the moment and then we'll, we'll work in employment around those like we always do as athletes. Yeah, totally. It's pretty exciting for wheelchair basketball to be in the Commonwealth Games for the first time. So I think that's an amazing thing to be aiming towards. I think it's really exciting because Com Games is one of those um, events that is fully integrated para and able-bodied. Um, and I think it's a really good chance for able-bodied athletes to see what we do um, and understand that we are actually equals and not just just not just little kids running around in wheelchairs playing sport like we we train the same level that they do and we compete at the same intensity that they do so I think it's really good for them to see that and you can see it um, particularly in like the swimming and athletics that have been integrated for a while now um, the level of respect between the able-bodied and power athletes. Thank you Sarah it was great to hear from Hannah and Georgia I hope that progress on equality in sport and beyond continues to improve well done to all the Tokyo Paralympians. I know you helped many Australians get through lockdown. 